Welcome to Scrolling Down the Belt, the series where we explore games in the beat-em-up, brawler, and belt-scrolling action genres in mostly chronological order. Since this is a brand new series, let's set the stage. Scrolling Down the Belt will be covering mostly Japanese-developed games with the occasional excursion into Western titles. There are way too many games in this genre to possibly cover every single one, but we'll be hitting all the high points and then some. The hardware platforms will include everything from arcade, to the NES and Famicom, to modern-day consoles. 2D games will also be the main focus. And to be more specific about what types of games I mean, well, the kind where your character moves to the left or right and punches, kicks, or whatever is enemies coming at you. And though the Japanese term belt scrolling action game refers to games where you can also move your character up and down on the screen, we won't always be adhering to that restriction for the games found in this series. We're starting things off by talking about the granddaddy of the genre, Irem's Kung Fu Master, or Spartan X in Japan. And while Kung Fu Master doesn't exactly qualify as a belt-scrolling action game, since you can't move up or down, there's no doubt that it set all the standards. Thomas, our Kung Fu Master, works his way up the five floors of the Devil's Temple to save love interest Sylvia from Mr. X, fighting five bosses known as the Sons of the Devil along the way. If this plot sounds at all familiar, Kung Fu Master was heavily inspired by two different martial arts films. The first is 1972's Game of Death, starring Bruce Lee. The original version featured Lee's character ascending to the fifth floor of a pagoda, much like the Devil's Temple, to save his younger sister and brother as he fought various martial artists along the way. The second film isn't even as much of an inspiration as it is actual licensing. 1984's Wheels on Meals, starring Jackie Chan, Sammo Hung, and Yuen Biao, was also released under the name Spartan X in Japan. This video game version is a loose adaptation of the final act of the film, where protagonist Thomas, played by Jackie Chan, ascends a castle to rescue Sylvia. The Japanese arcade flyer even featured the main cast of the film front and center, making absolutely no attempts whatsoever to hide its source material. The original arcade cabinet had a four-way joystick, no diagonals for you, and two buttons, allowing Thomas to move either left or right, jump or crouch, in combination with punching or kicking. Punches get you more points and do more damage than kicks, but have a shorter range. The jump kick is also a very useful move since it clears out groups of enemies in one blow and acts as an anti-air attack as well. Enemy attacks deplete your health gauge, which, along with the idea of bosses appearing at the end of the level and really telling any kind of an obvious story at all, was not really a given for arcade games at the time. Most of the enemies you run into are these guys, who want nothing more than to form a train and... hug Thomas to death. But you'll also face the much more deadly knife throwers, tom-toms, and even snakes and dragons at the beginning of level 2, and poisonous moths at the beginning of level 4. Huh. The types of enemies that can attack you in each level are set, but the order and arrangement that they appear in is very random. This can lead to straightforward romps to the level's boss, spending a lot of time clearing out a seemingly endless line of dudes, or the worst situation of all, knife throwers appearing on each side of you. This can absolutely be a run killer. The Sons of the Devil are an interesting cast of characters that include a man wielding a staff, a boomerang thrower, another man who's just large and looks like Mr. Clean, some sort of magician who can make copies of himself, and of course, the big boss himself, Mr. X. And he's a little bit underwhelming, isn't he? And in addition to the voice samples used for Thomas's attacks, each boss also has their own distinct voice samples when they defeat you, with Mr. X's booming laugh also taunting you in between levels. Most of these bosses have specific strategies to make them easier to beat than they seem, but like a lot of arcade games, you have to know those strategies first. If you don't, some of them can seem like impassable walls. If you can manage, though, you're treated to a brief ending in which Thomas and Sylvia are reunited, for now. Because like many arcade games of the era, Kung Fu Master throws you into the next loop of the game right after clearing it. Good job. You can't talk about the history of Kung Fu Master, though, without talking about its designer and producer, Takashi Nishiyama. 
He designed 1982's arcade title Moon Patrol at IREM before working on Kung Fu Master, and left IREM for Capcom before Kung Fu Master was fully completed. At Capcom, he designed the arcade game Trojan, or Tatakai no Banka, which in many ways was considered to be the next evolution of Kung Fu Master. We'll cover that game in a future video. But the boss fights of Kung Fu Master really stuck with Nishiyama. And in a 2020 Street Fighter retrospective with Matt Leone, Nishiyama mentioned that they directly led to the creation of the original Street Fighter in 1987. And though the fighting game revolution didn't happen until the 1991 sequel Street Fighter 2, we wouldn't have ended up there without the original. Nishiyama then left Capcom to go to SNK, where he created the Fatal Fury or Garo Densetsu series. And he eventually went on to establish the game development house Dimps in 2000, and things came full circle when Dimps handled the development of Street Fighter 4. So not only did Kung Fu Master launch the beat-em-up genre, but it also led to the creation of fighting games. The game was a big hit in arcades. The Japanese publication Game Machine mentioned Spartan X as the number one grossing table-style cabinet of January and February 1985. A 1986 issue even stated in its overseas readers column that certain games, such as Spartan X, were receiving renewed interest in arcades thanks to their home Famicom ports. Western arcade-focused publications also reported similar results. This success naturally led to Kung Fu Master being ported to all manner of Western computer platforms such as the Apple II, Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum, and Amstrad CPC. The MSX even got a port in Japan under the altered title Seiken Acho, Acho being the way Bruce Lee's iconic shout when striking an opponent is represented in Japanese. And this was because another completely different MSX game based on this property already existed, Jackie Chan's Spartan X, which also made its way to the NEC PC8801 computer via Pony Canyon. Like a lot of early computer ports of arcade games, these range wildly in quality and accuracy. And though many of them got favorable reviews in game publications, none of them quite managed to completely capture the look and feel of the arcade original. There were also home console ports on the Atari 2600 and 7800 in the West. The 2600 version deserves a special mention, since it was no doubt a significant feat of programming given the severe hardware limitations at play. The 7800 version much closer resembles the original, but there's still something that feels just a bit off given the capabilities of that hardware. IREM also developed and published a game called Kung Fu Master slash Spartan X on the Game Boy, but that's really a different game altogether, so we'll save that one for a future video. But the most well-remembered home port is, of course, the NES Famicom version. This port is still titled Spartan X in Japan, but bears the slightly shortened name of Kung Fu in the West. Having launched on the Famicom in 1985, it was still a relatively early title in the life of the system. But what makes this port especially unique is that it was developed completely by Nintendo. It was even produced, directed, and designed by Shigeru Miyamoto, with music and sound effects by Koji Kondo. You've probably heard of those guys. In a 2010 interview with Miyamoto on the 25th anniversary of the original Super Mario Bros., he mentions that he wanted to work on porting Spartan X to the Famicom to gain experience using side-scrolling in a game. He was interested in expanding this to the platforming genre and had wanted to achieve this back with the original Donkey Kong. In a 2012 interview with 4Gamer.net, Former IREM employee Scott Sumuda revealed that he'd actually wanted IREM's first title released on the Famicom to be Spartan X instead of Spelunker. However, Miyamoto negotiated with IREM, saying that he absolutely wanted Nintendo to be the ones to work on the Spartan X port. This was okayed from above without involving Tsumura at all, which understandably made him pretty upset. And this series of events is exactly what led to IREM being able to include an LED at the top of their Famicom cartridges to indicate whether the game was powered on. This was something Nintendo apparently didn't like due to it changing the specifications by which those cartridges were manufactured, and it probably resulted in an increase of manufacturing costs too, but that's just the way business works sometimes. 
Though some of the more colorful elements of the story were removed on the Famicom port, such as calling the bosses Sons of the Devil, this is easily the most faithful home port of the bunch. All the action feels right, and the bosses even retain voice samples for their laughs, though Mr. X's sounds a lot less sinister. A completely arcade perfect port was extremely rare at this time, given the relative limitations of home console hardware. So this was right up there with the best you could expect, even if this port is quite a bit easier due to the inability to show as many enemy sprites on screen at a time. The Famicom version even added two-player alternating play in two different game modes, A and B. They're ultimately the same game, but the B mode ramps up the difficulty, allowing enemies to do considerably more damage to Thomas. And finally, the Famicom version comes on a beautiful purple cartridge that features a cartoonish rendering of Thomas, obviously meant to evoke the likeness of Jackie Chan. An odd version of Kung Fu Master was also included on the IREM Arcade Classics collection, which released on the Saturn and PlayStation and never made it outside of Japan. This port features newly reworked graphics, sound effects, and even a newly arranged soundtrack. The gameplay itself is mostly accurate to the original, with some small differences that are just enough to trip up someone who knows the arcade version well. This same collection is also available digitally on the Japanese version of the PlayStation 3 online store for as long as that continues to function. And though it's far from being the most complex side-scrolling beat-em-up, everything has to start somewhere. There is a perfectly fun game to play today, whether you just want pick up and play action for a few minutes, or you've learned all the tricks and can clear it in one credit in a very short amount of time. It served as a strong foundation for all the games that we'll be exploring here in this video series. And now that you've seen the mark that it left behind, you won't be able to help but notice it all over the beat-em-up genre. Next time on Scrolling Down the Belt. Stop it! Stop laughing!